Um, so I sold the gap. And then once we started uh, basing, uh, I was anticipating that like red green fi uh, fake out. I bought the shares back in um, and like old Matt, even like a month ago, Matt probably would have sold this all by like the mid fours. But after talking with Jack Roo and Kyle and focusing on just holding on to my gains longer, uh, I sold like really small pieces all the way up. I posted the chart on Twitter and it looks like I have a lot of executions, but I was just selling like such small pieces because um, I was trying to hold on for as much of the gain as possible. And my best sell was actually uh, on this day, 688, which like basically top ticked it. That's where I got out the rest of my shares. Uh, and that was my big trade on it. With, like textbook OTC breakout, just a little twist of the green red fake out. Welcome back everyone to This Week in Steady Trade. Once again, we have Tim Sykes with us, it's just the traveling band of traders here. Uh, we're in San Diego uh, while we're filming this. So welcome back Sykes, pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Congrats on the success. 60K yesterday, record day. Yeah, thank you. Amazing, you upgraded your wardrobe. Fantastic, before it was like, uh, what, Reebok and now you're Adidas. Can you comment on the change? Um, honestly, it's, I just did some laundry. I know you're really good at doing laundry. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so this think, is what I got I with was, me today. I was going to go with Adidas because it's all day I dream about stocks, but you know, you didn't go oh, there. I like that. I, I wasn't following you there. That makes sense. There you go. I've, I've so, said that before too. Connecticut boys, baby. Oh yeah. We think alike. Congrats to Jack on yet another six figure day. What is this? Not that we're counting, but it's like pretty much every day, like six figures a day lately. Um, no, I don't think I, my realize was only like 80,000 today. Oh, uh, you're but, only, yeah. Yeah. only, only, only 80,000 today. Doesn't count. Um, you're 20 K short. Once again, <laughs> Once again, I mean, I would have been six figures, but unfortunately I took some shorts and covered a swing short. And that was, you know, $10,000 in losses right there. And then uh, GME, I lost on NASDAQ today, but all my OTC longs where my best edges in the market right now were pretty much all gains. Um, and it's just insane to see that how the money kind of transitions in and out where OTCs were really hot. And then last week, NASDAQs were really hot with GME. And now it feels like it's transitioning back into OTCs. Um, so I'm excited to see how the rest of this week plays out. See if uh, we get some more nutty moves or just take what the market gives us. Yeah. And I think with, with Kyle's losses on his shorts too, I think mm -hmm. we can just conclusively say shorting sucks right now. Stuff. Whenever Sorry. I place a short trade, I just like, I just hate it. I'm just like this, like, oh my God, like, here we go again. Um, I was watching because... some of your Connie's, you know, trading tickers too. And I had, I literally watched, I don't recommend this. I want to warn everybody trading tickers too was coming out. I was watching it before I went to bed, all shorting on that specific chapter. I had nightmares. I woke up at three in the morning. I was pretending like, like I was a short seller. I was like, this stock is a scam. It just keeps going. And I could not go to sleep and it messed me up for like a whole day. So don't watch Trading Tickers Part 2 before going to bed. It will give you nightmares. <laughs> Unless you're like Kyle, who likes the dark side. I like the dark side. But right Put now- the this hood on. Put the hood on, Palpatine. <laughs> Stop hiding. Yeah, exactly. Totally like that. Like, <laughs> hey. No, I, I would have been I would have been green today if it wasn't for right the same swing short on W and DW that me and Jack took. Um, yeah, things just don't go down uh, in this market. It doesn't matter really the fundamentals. Um, if the company's in the hot sector, you know the these stocks really have a lot of buyers, and so it's just something to adapt to. And and why I've been going long more. And you know I think I have two longs overnight. One is in the drone sector, which is a hot sector. Um, so yeah, you just have to adapt. You got to keep adapting. And right now shorts are just not. You know I make money on shorts, but there are just a few trades every now and then that are just not good. So on days like today, it ends up why I'm, it's the reason why I'm red, you know, so. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, boys. Um, yeah, let's bust out some charts here. Uh, we don't have a ton of time. So Kyle, fire it up. All right. 
Fire it up, big dog. Here we go. Let's get this shit out of the way here. Um, okay. So walk us so through the TSNP, path. if you go back to the daily. Mm -hmm. For anyone not following the stock, I would say this is the shimp of 2021. A shimp was in 2019. Uh, TSNP was like 2020, 21, 21 so far. But this stock has come from dubs, like below a penny. And now we're at 66 cents, which, just, which is just insane. And in my opinion, because TSNP was up today, we saw a lot of momentum in other names. And the same, the same thing when TSNP ran the first time, we see a lot of momentum in the other names, uh, specifically ENZC. Uh, they have been running the same pretty much. If you look at the ENZ, ENZC chart, um, and I'll let Kyle pull this up first so you can ENZ. see. Yeah, so this chart also is just like TSNP, came from below a penny and now we're at 34 cents. So TSN, TSNP has definitely struck a lot of life into OTCs, a lot of low priced ones that like me and Kyle were saying, like nothing really fades off. It just seems like hold, go higher, hold, go higher, hold, go higher. And it's just pretty mind boggling how high these stocks are going. Um, I don't know if we're at the top yet, but it certainly feels the higher we go, like the more you fork, everything's getting, the market caps on these are getting into the billions. So I'm being very cautious with these stocks because at any time they can pull the rug and all these stocks, as you can see, ENZC, that one day panic, basically 50%. Um, and that's what can happen when these things go south and it will be really hard to get out. So I'm being really cautious with these stocks at the highs. And now getting back to TSNP, I'll briefly explain how I traded it. Um, one thing before you do, I just want to bring up, just keep that chart for a second. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the daily volume compared to, you know, when they were really starting to spike in November and December. We're not seeing that much volume, which is, I mean, there's still a lot. I mean, it's still trading 200 million shares on the day. But compared to what it did a few weeks ago, I think it's interesting to note that I think sellers are just exhausted. Like, you know, we're seeing plays like even ALYI, which, you know, a few weeks ago was such a trouble uh, troublemaker where it could not even break convincingly into the twos or the threes. And now, I mean, I just sold some uh, top ticket today in the sevens, low seven twos. And I think that, you know, whether we're at like a, a market top or, or not, it's incredible to see them just slicing through all the sellers. Um, I think there's a lot of exhaustion with, you know, just people saying like th these companies aren't worth a lot. Um, and you just have so much stimulus money and, and so many buyers, they're just overwhelming everything. And, and it's fascinating to watch. I, I'm still very cautious. Like I didn't want to trust ALYI overnight. Looks like it's been a good decision so far, but you know, it looks like it probably is going to go up again tomorrow. Um, be very careful with, with these lower volumes. Um, just, just a weird thing that I'm, I'm noticing. Yeah. And good that's point. what, um, that's what keeps me away from some charts is because if you just think about it, like a lot of these people are in from the lows, but in this market, nobody wants to sell like everybody is convinced that these stocks are literally like nobody wants to take profits which is why i think we're seeing this insane momentum um like with gme for example like no matter how many people were bearish on it when it was in the one 200s 40s like the stock kept going and why did it keep going because the supply and demand was just well, not there like the demand was just so much higher and nobody wanted to sell and that's why i just kept going up so that was really uh eye-opening for me but it eventually did crash once there were some regulations and stuff like that as you can see but it it went up and i was pretty bearish on it that huge gap up day like i didn't really think that it could go much higher and sure enough like it did gap up that next day if you see the wick up there and even the next day after the big red candle um it just seems like when stocks were on the backside, like there was just more, more dip buyers, more people to keep buying. So it's been really eye opening, and that's what's really scared me about short selling because no matter, like you'll just frustrate yourself trying to short because you're like, why does this keep going up? Why, why, why? And it's just because nobody wants to sell, and that's just the market we're in. Um, and I don't, I don't suggest that. Like I, I always suggest like locking along the way. Uh, making sure you're not getting too over convicted in some of these setups. 
Um, but to get back into TSNP, I think that's enough on the overall market. TSNP was a really good trade for me today. I think I locked in like 40 grand on the breakout. Um, and it all started with dip buys yesterday after it had that clear morning spike. We legitimately went sideways the entire day. So to me, that is solidifying. Uh, we are neutralizing. There is not too many sellers or buyers at the moment. And I know TSNP like the back of my hand and I know this stock usually gaps up. So I got long yesterday around 45, 46. And once we gapped up, I added some shares to my position and changed risk to 48 after we cleared uh, the low 50s. And then from there, I just sold into the spike. I actually sold it way too soon. Um, I thought I was doing a really good job, but I sold my shares. 59 was my best sell. Um, yeah, right there. So as you can see, it went another leg. And then that locked in about 40 grand. And then I went short into the parabolic because I thought it was going to pull back. It was getting very extended. Got a really good fill at 64. And it did pull back. I did not cover any. And I ended up taking it off over the high day for 65 for pretty much a one cent loss. Lost like 500 bucks or something. And then it went parabolic again. And this time I got short of 72 and I had patience. Um, covering up the majority of my shares down at 64, 65. So that was a nice little 5K win. Um, and then once it kept fading, I was getting interested in it for another gap up, but I'm using much smaller size this time. So last time I gapped up uh, 250,000 shares from 45.5. And this time I'm only gapping up 100,000 shares from 58.5. And I'm, I also have a huge cushion and a really good entry um, from the bottom there. like right around VWAP, I saw that double bottom. I saw that it had been downtrending for an hour or two. And I just got long there risking my entry and we uptrended into the close. So tomorrow, what I would look for is a gap up. And if we see any kind of weakness, I will be getting out because this stock is very extended and I don't want to be playing. Uh, I don't want to be playing any games. I know how hard it can come down. So just a small position overnight in case I can catch uh, a gap up, um, just knowing that today was a really hot OTC day. So I do have um, a lot of stocks overnight because of how many stocks were hot tonight. So a lot of people are gonna be late to the party and use those uh, buy orders at the open and gap them up. And then we'll kind of wait for the dust to settle and see if the trend is gonna be all red tomorrow or if there's gonna be you know a, th a third wave of buying, which would be a little bit insane. But I definitely feel like we are near the top on some of these um, so that's all I got there. Yeah, I mean, let me just say about TSNP. I mean, today was like the, the first big daily breakout. I mean, if you go back to a daily chart, um, this is like a first green day. I, you know, I, I'm impressed with how far it's gone. I mean, this is the biggest candle that it's literally ever had. You can see just by the size of it. Um, and it's, it's crazy to me that, um, you know, there are a lot of people who are just holding and, and hoping and, you know, like, when, I, when we, we sell and we take like our 5, 10, 15% gains and they're up like, you know, 700, 5,000% and they're like, why don't you just hold? I don't want anyone to get into that habit, even though it's worked in this kind of bubble market, the longer this bubble market goes on, the least, um, the, the less effective that strategy is going to be. Um, the riskier it gets, the higher these stocks are. So um, I, if you missed the run up, that's fine. You learn from it. I mean, I sold a lot of this stuff too soon, but you know, somebody was like ripping on me on Twitter. They're like, ha, how do your small gains, you know, your, your barely like beer money make for TSNP. And I'm like, I've made a hundred thousand dollars plus. I, I mean, that buys a lot of beer. I don't drink that much anymore. Um, I donate it all. And I, I encourage anybody with big gains to donate hundred percent of their trading profits to charity too, especially if you're in on the promotion, you know, maybe you should do something useful for the world instead of being, you know, a sleazy promoter. Um, don't feel like you have to hold these things. I don't care if some people are up a lot. Um, again, take uh, very meticulous positions. I made a few thousand dollars just dip buying this into an intraday panic, selling into the bounce. Um, very little risk given my, my you know, sniper-like trade. And I think that's the way to play a lot of these. No different than SIRC. I bought that breakout quite nicely. Um, and frankly, I, I sold it when I had, you know, solid profits of, of several thousand dollars. It, it got a little too crazy for me. Very similar to ALYI. Both of them had a similar kind of double tops. Pull that, look at, go back to that intraday. 
of SIRC for a second. Look at that kind of double top. Um, you know, I sold it in the second one. The second uh, top was a little lower than the first. Now go to ALYI. Uh, ALYI intraday also had a double top. And on this one, the second one was higher than the first. And yet, you know, both of them, it's basically a double top. So look for those potential double tops. It's not an exact science. The second one might be a little higher uh, or a little lower, but I'm, I'm proud to sell into strength. And, and don't ever let anybody tell you, you know, not to be meticulous, not to lock in profits. There's a lot of shady people, a lot of liars, a lot of promoters. Don't be influenced by them. Laugh at them, poke fun at them, but don't listen to them. Otherwise, you know, you'll, you'll probably just go all in or, or bet big at the wrong time. Like most people holding GME AMC when they heard about these things, I got so many DMs like, should I invest in GME? No, GameStop was a good trade. Fantastic job, Wall Street bets, but it is not a long-term investment. It is very speculative. And the higher these things go, the riskier they get. So most people hear about them too late. Don't be that person, be better. Absolutely. Uh, let's go over Ink W. Uh, I'll talk about this one. Uh, it's probably one of my better trades ever um, in terms of just executions. Uh, and that's a large part because I was really focused on the exits on this trade more so than the entries. Because my entries, I've gotten pretty good at entries just over the last year or two. But my exits, I always sell too soon. So I was working on holding this one a little longer. Uh, but as you can see from the daily, big breakout there. Um, so I had a great run and then pulled back for what looks like three red days and then finally broke out again. So I started buying it into the close on that green day. Uh, what was that Friday? I can't remember the date. The first, it must've been Monday. Okay. Monday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I started buying into that. Um, we had some strength, a little double bottom perk into close. Those were my first entries. Um, and then I sold the open uh, because just one thing I've been seeing uh, is the red green level like just doesn't matter as much as it used to the red green level on OTCs, especially if you watch like train tickers, like it's like the do or die level or it used to be, but now like, I think since everyone knows like trust green red, um, we see like these fake outs where this one like faked red for a little bit, then formed some uh, higher lows and just ripped back green and then continued its breakout. Like awesome. Um, so I sold the gap. And then once we started uh, basing, uh, I was anticipating that like red green fa uh, fake out. I bought the shares back in um, and like old Matt, even like a month ago, Matt probably would have sold this all by like the mid fours. But after talking with Jack Roo and Kyle and focusing on just holding on to my gains longer, uh, I sold like really small pieces all the way up. I posted the chart on Twitter and it looks like I have a lot of executions, but I was just selling in like such small pieces um, cause I was trying to hold on for as much of the gain as possible. And my best sell was actually, uh, on this day, six, eight, eight, which like basically top ticked it. That's where I got out the rest of my shares. Uh, and that was my big trade on it with like textbook OTC breakout, just a little twist of the green, red fake out. And since then it's totally continued, um, crazy move. Uh, I haven't traded it since then it's cause it's overextended. Um, it's up from a penny and today we closed really weak. So. Uh, I mean, this will go out like midday tomorrow, but this is a top watch for me for a panic dip buy. Um, I mean, the lower, the better. Five cents or lower. I'd love this to just pull really hard um, so we get a nice little bounce on it. But we'll see what see what happens tomorrow. Anyone else trade this? I sold, um, sold it in the threes. Sold it in the threes. <laughs> I bought it in the twos. I dip on it right <laughs> here and then flipped it. And then you just see what happens after. <laughs> um, I, I'm almost, I took a, like, I probably took like 10 trades today. I don't even remember half of them. It, we're just, this is insane market. Um, yeah. yeah I'm just, my mind's just, uh, it's everywhere. I was overwhelmed. It's funny, yeah. like, it comments there. He's like, this market's just insane. It's just insane. And this is what's interesting. Yeah. Like, everyone really succeeding right now has proper perspective where it's like, We've seen slower markets in 2017, 2018, 2019. A lot of people don't even realize that this is truly a bubble market. Um, so just be extra cautious, okay? I don't know how long this is gonna last. I hope it lasts, you know, two or three years. If it, if it does, you know, who knows how many millions we'll, we'll make. Um, but it could also end tomorrow. It could also end in a week or two. Um, going back to the year 2000, if you've read my book, An American Hedge Fund, you might know I made 700 grand the first four months 722 grand, I think was the exact number. 
the first four months of 2000, then the NASDAQ crash, no more OTC breakouts. I didn't know short selling the last eight months of the year. I lost 10 grand while I was learning short selling, but there wasn't really much money to be made. So that could happen again. Um, just continue taking it one trade at a time. The worst thing to do is say, oh, I'm overwhelmed. There's too many plays. Um, I feel guilty when I miss out on bigger runs. So let me just hold. If you just hold, yes, you might have bigger wins, but you're also opening yourself up to huge potential losses. And that is the biggest risk that you can have as a trader. It's good to sell too soon. I'm not, you know, embarrassed that I sold INKW and then it doubled from my sell. Yeah, I probably could have done better. I'll learn from that. But I still locked in profits of a few thousand dollars. And I would rather err on the side of caution. This is how I teach. This is how I trade. I think especially most people watching this, you're new in the markets. Trade overly safe. You don't have to be a jackaroo. Wait till you see this three and a half hour video that I did with him. You'll see all of his struggles and you'll never look at pillows the same. <laughs> Damn. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I kind of want to talk about my trade on it. And I would say this ticker, def like I don't nail every ticker. Like some people might think, oh, he just nails every ticker. Like I and KW, my trades on this were pitiful. Like I bought this stock at one nine when it first was breaking out on Monday. I had an entry of one nine. And guess what? I took profits at two, three. I took profits at two, three, which is literally the first spike. You know, I made, what is that? 15, 20%. And I was like, oh, that's a nice trade. Cause this day it was slower, right? We were still slow this day. So I was taking safe profits. And then by the close, it was up too much. I didn't want to chase for some reason. I didn't want to re-enter. Um, and then the next day I missed it. And right when it had gone back green to red and it was strong, I was like, this is going to be a big one. Um, and it was a big one. And guess what? I still didn't make anything on it. And then in the afternoon, I actually bought it around six cents when it was holding up very well. Um, in that consolidation and it spiked up to seven cents, but I wanted to swing it because I thought it would be a big gapper because the market was really strong and it closed week. And I was like, okay, perfect. We closed week. We should gap up over the, the day high and, you know, run to 10 cents. And basically what happened was it was a week gap up. We broke, we broke the all day support that we held yesterday. As you can see, we broke that support just by a little bit. I got shaken out and then it just ran straight up to exactly where I wanted to sell. Um, and then into the afternoon, I tried to dip buy on it around eight, the eight cent support um, into the afternoon, Kyle. Up there. Yep, into the afternoon. And I just got washed out on that one. And then I missed the, the dip buy down in the sixes. So as you can see, like I really struggled with this ticker like hardcore. And when it's all said and done, I think I was break even on it. So you don't have to nail every single ticker. Like this was one of the best winners. Matt did a fantastic job on this. Um, and I'm just basically taking the lessons from it and trying to apply it to the next one that looks similar to this. So you don't need to nail everyone as long as you're learning every time. That's all that matters. And that's the best part of this market right now. Like you have endless opportunities to learn. Like it's not even just about how much you can earn, it's how much can you learn? So if you do sell one too soon, then you try to be a little more aggressive on the next one. If you're too aggressive on one, then you try to be safer on the next one. If you miss one, don't worry. It's gonna be a few minutes or a few hours until the next one. Like in slow markets, many of you are unaware, but you don't have these many supernovas in a month that we're seeing in a day. I mean, I'm taking a dozen trades a day. There have been months in the past where I've only taken a dozen trades over the month or half a dozen trades over the month. So recognize you know, what's going on in this market. Try your best to learn from every play. Try to take your piece of the pie, but at the same time, recognize that even those of us who've been trading for years, we're not perfect. We can sometimes be very far off, um, but we learn from it, we adapt, and you know, I'm, I'm not embarrassed by any mistake. This is, this is how trading works. Boom. Kyle, you got one for us? Um... Uh, let's see if I even remember any of my trades. Well, the, the, so the swing short that I did lose on and why this shorting is so insanely difficult um, is this W and W right here. So if we, let me pull up the chart here. Um, so this company, you know, I'm not a big fundamental guy, but I mean, they, they don't have revenues of their product. 
<laughs> this is their chart. Um, and, but they're, they're in solar, they're a solar company, you know, they're supposed they're a solar company. So this is what you get. Um, back in January, I had my new biggest gain on this, these two red days, this first red day short and the supernova move. Um, but I actually also made money on this supernova move as well. So we have almost like a constantly growing supernova. And each time I thought, okay, you know, if you, you know, if you know the penny stocking framework, the next step is like the number six short and me feeling like I knew this company, I thought like the number six short would be a great starter to then actually swing it for like a week, two or three weeks to like really get some awesome downside. And so, as you can see here, when I did that, I mean, I had to cut it over nine bucks and I actually ended up buying that breakout as well. Uh, sold it in like the twelves or thirteens here. Um, like I said, I made money on this short. And so we did the same thing again. So I'm like, okay, number six pattern, like I'm going to short this and this will be the final time we're backside. And as you can see today, like we didn't even, you know, unlike last time where we actually had a few dips to like consolidate. I mean, this time we've just gone straight up back to highs today. Um, this is too overextended me. I, I definitely don't feel comfortable buying this 19 break, but it's like, I would love for this to go to 30, you know, as a saying, as that would sound like if it did do that, then I would be, I would love to look for another backside move. Um, that's just the market we're in. Uh, in terms of like other trades, OZSC, well, I didn't even know, it was like, wasn't even eventful. I, ISCR, same thing where I didn't even take this trade because I thought I was chasing. I thought I was chasing at the 140s. And the next thing I see, it's at 150. And then, you know, Tim sells up here in the 160s. And I was like, I was too emotional with it. And I, I didn't want to trace it. Um, AOI, I am long overnight. I have a great average in the low sixes when it broke out over the previous highs um you know here and here so i'm still swinging that but you know not my most favorite close but like i said like like we've been talking about in this market i i'm willing to give some of these a little more time to work um so we'll, ju we'll just see what tomorrow has to offer all right sykes you got any closing words for us today Did you hear that is that a bird, I, that's that's a bird outside. i'm outside what? and like the trees are like over here there's what? Birds. outside what is this word what is this foreign language i see something out there i thought it was just a screensaver i thought we're not allowed to go outside um no i mean right now again i, I just want people to really maximize this opportunity to learn every single person that you see really banking took the time two three four five years ago to push themselves learning we didn't know that there was going to be this hot market i didn't know um, but now they're being rewarded. So if you didn't start years ago, you can't go back in time. All you can do is now recognize the upside potential. I mean, when these guys, like literally all of these guys are in their young twenties and I frankly need some more young, you know, other students, like female students, um, guy students, like anybody can learn or old people too. I don't, I don't want to discriminate against anybody, but we're all in this crazy market together. And you really have to maximize that. I don't want you taking any days off, no trips to going, you know, snowboarding, no taking, you know, hours off to go surfing in the middle of the trading day. Go surfing after the trading day closes, you West Coast hippies. Come on, okay? The market closes at 1 p.m. You don't have to go surfing at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. That's wasteful. Don't waste this opportunity. Learn, even if you're not trading, even if you're paper trading, even if you're trading with a small account, don't think that this is all about how much money you can make right away. The biggest money that you will make will be years and decades later on. These guys who are making literally like annual salary incomes in like a day or two should inspire you, but don't think that that's the norm. These are just a few traders. The vast majority of traders in this industry lose. And why is that? Lack of preparation, lack of taking it seriously following other people's alerts, not building their own self-sufficiency, not getting really obsessed with learning. This isn't getting obsessed with money. It's getting obsessed with learning. The money is the byproduct of a successful and dedicated education. So that's how you have to think. I know this might sound like, yeah, yeah, Tim, just give me a stock pick. No, I will not give you a stock pick. Do not follow my alerts. Do not follow anybody's alerts. Learn the process. If you actually want to be successful, it's up to you. But if you learn the wrong way, if you don't invest time and money into your education, if you don't have the right tools, if you don't have the right brokers, you are only cheating yourself and you deserve the best. Your family deserves the best. So stop cheating yourself. Stop cheating your family. Take this stuff seriously. Boom. Uh, boom. Yeah, those are great closing words. And like I was thinking about it as you were saying it, if you go back and even look at our twist episodes, I can't remember when we started this. It's probably approaching uh, a year, last, honestly. Last year in May, right? April, May? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 
and I was up like 200k. Kyle was like I don't know four five hundred. Jack yeah. was like I don't know six seven hundred, and like just the uh, numbers, bro. Um, I'm pretty sure, like I hadn't even hit five hundred yet. Like five hundred. Oh really? I have to go look at the numbers. I don't. I don't remember. What a blur. But and when they're saying 500, understand they're still saying 500,000. These guys are so rich, they've lost total perspective on reality. You know, like we're, we're literally like, you know, living the lives that most people dream of. But it has happened because they invested time, money, really their lives into getting educated. If you look at any of these guys' bedrooms, it's basically just computer monitors, beds, books. You know, that's it. There, there's nothing else. And that's how you have to think about your education. Like this is the time to really push it. You can learn probably 10 years worth of a normal stock market all in like the next few months if you take this seriously. So that's why I'm making these videos just to like help you get the right mindset. Some people make excuses like in emails I see or messages. And I'm just like, do you understand what's going on right now? Like they make these stupid excuses like, oh, my broker doesn't do this. Shut up, get a new broker. Oh, I can't do this. Shut up, get the right mindset. Stop wasting it, you greedy, spoiled people. You have the opportunity where we have technology. You have the tools, you have the resources, you have the plays every single day. You have to be a madman. You have to be a madwoman to ignore this stuff. You have to be the most spoiled person in the world not to learn from these opportunities. Don't be spoiled, be humble. Well, I can't end any better than that. If you're new, like, subscribe. We do this every week. Go check our old episodes out. Find out what numbers we were actually at. But it's been a long journey. Thanks for following. If you're every single person, leave a comment underneath this saying, I will be dedicated. Leave that comment. Every single person watching this, share this video. Help us spread the gospel, the word of education, the power of self sufficiency. This is the new gospel. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, Jack and Kyle, as always. We'll see you next week.